So if we take the next step now, before the break, what we looked at was the overall business idea and how to uh, start to describe your business idea in terms of customer value, market size, a little bit, degree of innovation and its feasibility, both profitability and, and uh, uh, you could say um, domestication wise. Now we're going to spend some time looking at an actual market strategy. And the important thing about the market strategy, of course, the marketing strategy is, is how we actually understand first the market, what the size and shape of the market is, and that we really have thought very detailed about what type or types of customer groups are going to be interested in our product, can they afford to, uh, to, to pay for it, are we taking the right price for it, and so forth. So we're taking one uh, uh, spade uh, deeper into the, to the problem. <clears throat> marketing isn't always an exact science, it's forecasting, it's looking into the future. So instincts and common sense are often the best tools that we have. However, I have a couple of tools that you can, uh, you can see. And beware that the, f the worst mistakes in business plans are often due to a bad marketing strategy. So this is really an, a, an area we need to pay uh, a great attention in our business plans. The model I'm going to, to, to work around for this is a three-stage uh, cycle of analyzing the market and the competition, choosing your target market, and then determining the strategy based upon that. And this is a continuous process, at least for a few cycles, until we've found uh, and, and pinned down the market that we're, we want to look at. One way of analyzing the market could be to do this type of a, an analysis here. You've seen them in all sorts of magazines or when you go out to buy a new computer or a new bike or whatever, it's nice to see this type of a chart. I advise you to do this type of a, a thing for your market, uh, to, to start your market analysis. What different types of, of, of products are out there? So this is uh, an analysis of um, Wi-Fi um, um, stations. And this company was looking at, at, at this particular one here. This is their own development. This is what we'd like to deliver. So we can do everything. We've got USB 2 port, we've got file server, print server, webcam, 3D dongle support, 3G dongle support, and so on and so forth. So that was their business idea here. And then they go out and they, they make an analysis, they benchmark it against other uh, uh, competitors. And they can see that, in fact, they're offering a lot in these features, a lot extra in terms of what's actually out there on the market and look at the price as well. So the price is roughly half the price as, of, of uh, the average competitor. So double the value at half the price. Maybe there's an alarm signal that should be sent there because they're taking too little for, the, for giving too much value away or they're being unrealistic in the way in which they're uh, setting their pricing or they've actually got uh, hold of a, a real disruptive technology which is or production process which is much cheaper that they can bomb all their all the other people out of the market so there's three possibilities there to do this type of benchmarking use the key uh, uh, deliverables and unique selling points that you have in your projects and your innovation projects and benchmark them against something uh, you can see out there and you may say well our products uh, our product is completely new but it may be, the technology may be completely new, but the functionality probably isn't. So benchmark against different ways of delivering the same functionality or, or same service to the, to the user. You can always find something to benchmark. Okay, back to this model here. Now, one more example, in fact. Um, one uh, telephone company, which I use for my children, in fact, uh, M1, a Danish company. Anyone else have M1? Yeah. This is the result of, of their, uh, it's a couple of years old now, a result of their, their, their market analysis exercise, which they constantly do. And something like de delivering uh, M1 as a, a mobile telephone or a mobile voice and data uh, provider. And this is something where you constantly need to go through those cycles of, as to analyzing the market, defining it and, and, and implementing it. And you can see the three different types of 
offering that they have here for the customer. Can anybody put words on the different types of person here? What, what type of a, of a market segment are they looking at for this one? So it's three hours free, spe uh, free talking for 99 Danish kroner per month, or six hours free speak for 149 a month, 11 hours free, sp free talking for 199 a month. Who is this customer group here? Can you put a, a label on them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously to go home to say to mom that they're still alive. Exactly. So young teenagers, young, the, it's the young pack for, because you saw, sorry, I didn't uh, point that out, free SMS and MMS and a very low amount of, of, of voice. So mum, send more money or dad come and pick me up from the swim, swimming uh, baths and so forth. The next label, what, would, what label would you put on this one? So six hours, free speed, free talking, free SMS and MMS. Any labels? Any ideas? No guesses? The average person. Say? The average person. The average person, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it could be a lot of things. In fact, they're, they're trying to signal it here. This is a guy in, in role-playing equipment. So it's, it's, the, it's the little bit older. Older teenager uh, was their, their, their main uh, uh, icon for this, but I think uh, the average person was, was uh, what they were going, going after here for six hours free speech, free talking per month, and free SMS and MMS. And this one down here, you can see it in the signal of the, of the icon they're using. The yeah, the professional. So M1 isn't actually a, a, a company which is has uh, the professional user as their, as their main focus, but it's, the, uh, it's one area where they, they, they uh, entered with here to give 11 hours of, of free speech. So they, that, that was one market strategy two years ago for this company. If you to look again today at what they're offering, it's, it's different again, because basically they're, they're constantly going through these cycles here of analyze the market, choose your target market, determine your marketing strategy. So for some businesses, you need to do this constantly. Other businesses more static or more longer term uh, than, than, than something as, as uh, fluid as this. If you look on uh, the, the website about the company, it's quite interesting to see how they define themselves based upon their marketing uh, strategy. And the interesting bits are in English. So M1 is Denmark's best online mobile provider. So that was quite a statement from start. It's a mobile company. We have no physical shops, but operate solely by the internet. One of our largest priorities is to keep our costs to an absolute minimum without, the same time, without at the same time compromising quality and service. We don't have our own network, so they piggyback the TDC network, so it makes it easier for, for them to do that. They're lucky they can do that. And that means that we can use all of our energy to offer a good product and a good service. So that's the way that they define themselves and define their markets there. Let's look at these in, in turn. Let's look at the first one about analyzing the market and the composition. So, as I said before, it's no exact science at this stage. It's forecasting in a, in a, to a great extent. So, estimating is an important part of, of planning your, your, uh, uh, your business model here. And there's a statement here, it's better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. So, make some good estimates out there. Start from a solid basis. So, what is it we think we know about the product and the customer base? Follow a logical path that we can, we can see and any investor can see the logical path you've been through. And when you come to the investor, if you get the investor on the hook after your two minute elevator pitch, then they want to see what is the logical path in your marketing strategy. That'll be the next question they'll ask you, in fact. And you need to then show them the algorithm that you're using. It may be that the figures are wrong, but it doesn't matter, as long as you can show what the logic is in your, in your reasoning. Compare your sources. So maybe there's different things out there you can check marketing statistics and so forth, I'll go into that in a second. Be creative, not in making figures up, but be creative in, in, in estimating the size of the market. Uh, try different ways to compare similar technologies or similar products or similar uh, user groups. And of course, check for the plausibility once you've uh, created all this. There's a difference between whether 
the market is an existing or an entirely new market. Some of you have, have come with ideas which are existing markets and a new uh, 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 technology, uh, technology uh, innovation in an existing market, in which case the figures are relatively easily available. You can go on the internet and, and find a lot of the figures to a library, so you can go to trade publications or trade organizations and get figures, key figures about the market size, public authorities. And you could, what you need to do based upon those figures you get is to forecast the growth which your innovation and your business idea will actually give based upon historical figures. So you need to go a couple of years back and say this is what we're going to do to the market or where we're going to fit into the market or the slice of the market we're going to take. If on the other hand your product or your service or your business uh, idea is completely new on the market, then you need to derive, derive figures from potential customers, potential segments, it's a lot more guesswork. But again, you need to see what, is it, what type of functionality is it and identify that market gap in as uh, 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 trustworthy a way as you can. You could do your own market research, questionnaires, sending out to, to uh, uh, different uh, potential market groups, go and stand in shopping centers if it's something a, a consumer product, send out questionnaires about uh, needs if it's a business to business idea and so forth. You can interview experts to, to discreetly check if there is a need for your, for your products and, and see what the, the, the size of that need could be or potential customers, but don't just ask mum and dad and your, your, your partner. That's a lot of business plans are, are based upon mum, dad and partner, which aren't detailed enough. Let's try a little example of this. Um, let's get that one there. Let's use 10, 15 minutes in your groups to estimate, estimate the size of the market for disposable nappies, which are also called diapers in American, in Denmark. Okay, 15 minutes in your groups. Based upon, I'll put this back on here. What is the potential market? And it's both in, in terms of how many and how much could you earn. And you've got 15 minutes. It is possible. And we'll see afterwards who gets closest to the figures. Remember to start from a solid basis. Follow the logical path and show your logic. Compare your sources. Be creative as to how you find the figures. And check afterwards for, for plausibility. Let's hear some figures. Does group want to start with your figures? How many nappies, diapers per year? 340 million diapers per year. And the, your market size in, in Danish krona? 680 million. Okay. Thank you. This group over here? Per year? Yeah. Uh, we calculated something like uh, 2,040 million. 2,040 million. 2,040 million, yeah. 2,040? 240 million, yeah. And price? Two krona per... Two krona per nappy, so 480. Yeah. Jeg kom frem til... Skal jeg tage de ældre med? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, the question was if you should take elderly people, yeah. and I didn't define that actually very well, but let, uh, let's take that. Uh, I calculated one point. No, in fact, do you have it with, does anybody have it with the elderly as well? Yeah. Do you have it without also? With the elderly. Okay, with and without, so just with. Okay, let's do it without. Sorry, there's my definition problem there. You come back to you then. Okay, next group here. Five hundred and five hundred million, and yeah, you also say two grown. So one thousand million. Okay, so here. We are saying we calculate it as packs per packs of diapers per year. 
Yeah. Uh, so if, if, I, if it's 42 uh, subscribers per pack, then it's 4.5 million packs times uh, 42 divers. So it's 100, uh, 190 million? 190 million per year. Plus minus 20%. Yeah. And price, what would you say that means? Just say two kroner, you said. <laughs> 380. Well, I can see some convergence here. You guys over here, just behind? Yeah, 200 million. 200 million? Yeah, and uh, 625. 625, so you're going for the, the luxury nappies. Yeah. Uh, 390 million. 390 million, yeah. yeah approximately 1 billion. 1 billion. Guys over here? We get the 44 million. Four, how many? 44. 44 million. Yeah. And price? Uh, 88. 88. On the fly. Did you say you guys are? Uh, 350. 350 million. And 700. 700, yeah. Guys behind there? 250 million. Yeah. And uh, two crores. Yeah. yeah, so 500 million. At the back? Uh, 204. 204 million. And we have four crores per night, so about 800. About 800. You're shopping at Yeah. <laughs> the guys at the right at the back there, do you have a different answer? Uh, um, 70 million. 70 million. Yeah. And price? Three quarter per diaper, so 210. Yeah. 481 million. 800 million. I'm shopping Neto. Yeah, the guys, are you the same group here with different? 350 million. 350 million. And 650 million. Okay. 650. Was there a group I've forgotten here? Did you get your chunks? Yeah, I got uh, around 500 million. 500 million? And the mark is off? Yeah, 1 billion. 1 billion, okay. Does anybody here have children? Okay. You may be in a, some advantage here. Okay, let's take a couple of the extremes here. 44 million, what was your, tell me your algorithm. Yeah? How many? 70,000. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are expecting to be using the divers from uh, zero to three years. Yeah. And then uh, we are using around six per, per day. Okay. So you did it on a per day in, in over three years, yeah? That makes 440. It does, yes. Yeah. You've, you've forgotten the zero. 7,000. 7,000. Okay. Okay. Right. And then the guys who got uh, 500 million? We got the 70,000 kids, that's why. Yeah. 70,000 kids, and you're saying 7,000 kids. Yeah, okay. So that's the difference in uh, the factors then. Let me show you my calcs here. So, just to show you <coughs> how I generalise. So I generalise that uh, Napa using children who's under three years, I forgot to say that at the start. Look at the demographics. We have around about uh, uh, 300,000 uh, under three years. So the uh, assumption is that the stis statistics I found, this, was, this took me five minutes to do. Uh, the statistics I found have stagnated generally since 1994. That was an assumption. They've slightly grown. But let's take that, so 300,000 children. Average amount of nappies is, uh, per child is 6,500 over their lifetime. Uh, their, not their lifetime, their three-year period. And that was taken from this website, um, naturebaby.dk. Um, and the price, I came to, again, approximately two kroners per, per nappy. And this is the important part, because if the sums are wrong, it doesn't really matter. It's the, it's the algorithm which is important. So I said, total market is number of children times number of nappies per child divided by three years, which is the use period, which is 300,000 times 6,500 divided by three, 650,000 nappies per year, and then two krona, 1.3 billion. 
And then I, that was that part of the, uh, of the sums. Then I went back and said, check for plausibility. And the market is, uh, 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 according to, to, to different market figures, the market's about one billion Danish kroner per year. So guys, give up your innovation projects and get into the nappy market. It's amazing, isn't it? Did you ever think it was so, so, so big? What can we learn from this? Well, apart, apart from this one, there's, there's, it, you know, the difference isn't that, that big. And if we asked you all to write your algorithms down, you went to the, to the, to the, uh, um, to the uh, task in a very similar uh, way. You uh, took, within the 15 minutes, uh, very pragmatic approaches to looking at, at uh, the, the details as to, to how to uh, find out how many children there are, how many nappies, and what the price, the uh, general price was, and there was some clear convergences to the price here. So this is the first step of, a, of a, uh, uh, looking at the market uh, analysis. And when you come to the bank with your market analysis or your venture capitalist or whoever it's going to be, they're going to say to you, okay, that looks interesting. Maybe we should double it just to be sure. And uh, as Jacob and I were talking about in the break, what they're really interested in is how you actually solve this problem rather than whether the, the, the figures are right or not. Because, of course, if they're interested in you, they'll go into to a lot of details there uh, with these. There's some sweet pictures of what 6,500 nappies uh, looks like in, uh, in bin liners or, or without. So that's a child's uh, nappy use per, per lifetime. Okay. So that was about putting some figures on uh, uh, general uh, uses of, of, of things, and they're relatively similar uh, figures. Let's look at how to analyze the market and the competition now. And there's quite a lot of people say that if there's no competition, there's probably no market. That's not always true because you have these so-called blue ocean and disruptive ideas, but generally there should be a market out there which you should be able to look at. Anyone offering you something in a market will have to face competitors sooner or later. And it's important already here in this market analysis to make sure that you pinpoint who are the most important competitors to us, what is their market share, and what market their industry forces are at work. Is there something which can actually stumble, make us stumble? Are they, do they have some sort of special agreement with uh, uh, councils? Is it part of a local council? Is it part of a, uh, uh, some sort of law uh, uh, regulations that they've got into some niche? So, you need to very, very detailed understand what the, the competitors and your, the whole of your uh, stakeholder network uh, is, is, is active with. You could also think about substitutes. And substitutes are products that provide the same customer benefit in different ways. That could be a complete different technology to provide the same functionality as we talked about before. Um, or it could be substitutes to your own products, in fact. People were very surprised when uh, this unnameable company started to, to make substitute products for their own product range. But in fact, it showed that they had a clear idea that, in fact, people would own one, two, maybe three per person of these things. One we go jogging with, one we have as a telephone, one that we uh, let the kids play with. And this is just developed and developed. So the evolution of the, the music playback device market is a, a really interesting uh, way of looking at how you can actually uh, come into the market with a substitute technology or substitute uh, business. One way that you should do, uh, do this analysis is um, to make a, a, a competitor analysis. And again, in a similar way that you did the NAPI exercise, you could do this where you look at all the different competitors. You could be competitor A, for example, and say our current market share is 40%, or maybe you're competitor E. So you're not part of this market at all. Maybe you're coming into this from, from a, a complete uh, fresh. But find out what the 100% market share actually consists of how long is it since the, uh, these companies launched their last market, uh, their the last product or last new business idea? That is really telling in terms of how innovative they are, whether they're sitting back on their laurels um, or whether they're constantly uh, innovating. And you can see in this example, uh, there's the, the shorter distances are the ones with the bigger market shares, and that really does fit together, in most cases at least. Is the new product innovation expected? Try with some sort of market intelligence to find out. And what is your evaluation of those competitors' capability to innovate? You may have seen it in articles. You may know somebody who works there. You may uh, have, have seen their, 
they made an evaluation of previous products or businesses. And then you can, from this type of analysis, you can uh, identify significant barriers for entry into the market by uh, competitor to A, B, C, and D, and so forth. And you can also see companies which have an old product which is uh, on its way out of the market. So competitor D here obviously has an old mar uh, product. They haven't done anything for 10 years and they're actually being squeezed out of the market. So they need to innovate. So maybe you could start by looking at what their unique selling points, there is still 5% still which are, are, are buying this product. Maybe you could look at, at what the unique areas of their product is and expand on those and, and open out that market share again. You're looking at choosing your target market now when you're doing your analysis. You need to understand which customers are interested in your product or your service or your idea. Not everybody has equal interest, so therefore you need to an, an identify which customers have uh, the most to win from your product, who's going to benefit the most, your key customers, can be best reached by you. Think about delivering and rolling out your, your, your business to the customers. You may have a, an idea for a, for a product or a business which in reality is difficult to, to, to deliver to the customers, ones who are ready to pay. So if we take this example before it gets too worn down as, as to how to, to plan or choose the target market here. Does anybody have a, a guess as the, the target market for this type of a home delivery of fruit and veg? What would you say in a, in a short sentence? Yeah? Busy people who like to have uh, new, exciting vegetables every day. Yeah, so busy people um, and adventurous. Maybe they have to have a little bit of money, so maybe it's uh, middle class, two income uh, people. Maybe families, maybe not families. That's a, a segmentation of it. But definitely busy people who don't want to go shopping. Also a little bit adventurous. Have some type of a, a values because they want to buy ecological and good quality. And they're ready to pay for it. They've got the income. So very easy at the, at the high level to, to identify this. And then you look at the segmentation. Should yield uh, customer groups that are as internally consistent as possible, but large enough to allow you to serve them efficiently. So. Within this example, there are different types of customer groups. There's the, uh, the single uh, couples, single couples, no, there's couples without children, and there's families with children, and there's families with larger children, and then maybe there's businesses as well. So we need to segment these as, as efficiently as possible. And we need to apply those criteria to the product design. If it's a product we're designing, this is a, a service system, so slightly different. But also the pricing needs to fit exactly to, to their needs, the publicity, the distribution, and so forth. So when you're doing your, your analysis of the, uh, of, the, of the target market, you need to do some demographics, decide what it is that's important to, to, uh, to, to, to uh, develop and, and uh, uh, target that. So age, demographics could be one thing you look at. The education level of the people, their buying behavior is also something. And then you could give them some titles as these are the option lovers, these are the value seekers, the service needers and describe them in some sort of a uh, uh, characterization of, their, of, of the person. They need to position your product. Tell us why the customer that you're going to sell your product to would, be, would buy your product rather than somebody else's. What is the, the more value, the added value you're coming with? What is, why is it better in some way? What are the unique selling points? So for this one, for example, it could be we're subscribing, it's a subscription for the first time where we had to go and buy our veg, fruit and veg before. It's a subscription. The unique selling point could be this, subscribing to ecology. Position and branding of the product, brand recognition and association, possibility to differentiate from the competition are all important things to look at. So taking the example from before, to take those segments that we found, option lovers, value seekers and service needers, focus on what the proposed positioning for each of those types is maybe you find when you come in this exercise that the uh, that this segment here is not actually relevant for us just yet. Maybe we'll save those until the the products, the business is a little bit further in, and we'll just take the first ones. But let's put some words on. Proposed, position, proposed positioning here for option lovers could be the new product has uh, lots of new features that you want. Uh, it's not unique in comparison to the competition, but it's just new features. And the value seekers. 
copy the product uh, cost the same as a traditional product, plus you get more bang for your buck, so you get more things uh, delivered there with different capabilities. Or maybe the service needers don't actually want the product, they just want a 24-hour a day service. And this is maybe the, the most unique proposition, but maybe the most difficult to go, to go for. And then find your overall positioning from these uh, uh, targeting exercises. So finally, before we take a, a, a break, the marketing strategy based upon, have you heard about the four P's of marketing? Product, price, place and promotion. This defines what measures you're going to employ in order to get your, your products out there. Let's look at all the, the four of them in, in turn. Firstly, the products, what characteristics does your product have to have in order to, to meet the customers? What price are you going to set on it? You all converge pretty much at two kroners per nappy. I think some of you were uh, uh, down here, we're copying each other, but others had, had, had clear uh, uh, ways of, of, of finding out what the, the price was, but what should the price be? What is acceptable on the market? Uh, if you get this wrong, you could completely kill your idea from day one. Place, how are you going to reach the customers? And promotion, how are you going to communicate and market it? Let's look, at, look at product. The characteristics, things to consider are whether the product actually really meets the customer needs or not. Be honest with yourself, because the customer will, uh, will certainly. To what extent is, uh, does a product that you're, you're, uh, have it, you have in mind need to be adapted to different segments? And what different features does the, uh, does the product have? What options? What quality? What sizes and colors? This uh, Austin's uh, homepage has nine uh, different types of, of uh, different options that you can subscribe to just at the moment. Quality is something which they have a stamp for, different sizes and colors and services, packaging and so forth. It's something you need to, to focus on here in, in the characteristics of your, your business idea. In terms of price, when you understand the positioning, what, type, what the demographics are, what the buying power of the, of the uh, customer is, you can, of course, understand what uh, type of price you can ask and what strategy you should adopt to get to that, that price. Important to understand is that price is rarely connected to cost, directly at least. It has a, a, a large role to play, and especially with, with capital products which are, are made out of stuff and things, things you need to produce. Of course, you need to break even there in some way or other. But increasingly, price is, is uh, a function of, of, of value proposition and value understanding on the user side than it is of cost of, of manufacturing things. So that's a tricky one to, to, to be aware of. Price that I mentioned to consider could be list price, discount, bundle offers, credit terms, and so forth. The place, distribution, how many potential customers are there? For, for our, our products, we take our example again. How do we get out to, to the customers? Are there uh, companies or individuals that, are, that we're talking about here that we're going to? Are they clustered? Are big cities easier to get to than, than uh, out in the countryside? Are we going to set up a business in another country, in Sweden? Therefore, we need some, some large uh, trucks, for example. What are the channels, the market coverage, different locations, and the needs for inventories? And this is a network of farmers all around Denmark producing ecological goods. So maybe there's something there we can, that we can, uh, can, can utilize. And then finally, promotion. How do we communicate with our customer? What ways can we advertise or tell what the customer benefit is of our product? What are the unique selling points? Uh, how do we... Uh, get the, the message across. Is it classical advertising, direct marketing, events, and so forth? Do we find a, a famous uh, television uh, host to interview us? Do we uh, have competitions where you can win a, a chef for the weekend? Do we put loads of uh, barcodes out there? There's many, many things here. This is the exciting, really exciting part of the marketing strategy where you can think of all the different ways of, of getting to the customer. So to summarize this part of the marketing uh, strategy, we've got something about the price, the product, the promotion, and the place. I'm not going to go through these again, but you can see these. And this is a little checklist for you of things to remember when uh, uh, trying to position your, your business idea on the market. Let's take a 10-minute break until uh, 25 past 10.